Passarelli. I joined the guitar faculty in 1984. I teach private lessons all levels. I teach a songwriting guitar lab. I started the Beatles Guitar Lab and the Beatles Recording Ensemble. I had guitars, it seems like, all my life. I had a guitar even at two years old. They were plastic in those days. <laughs> but for some reason my mom gave me a guitar. Then I saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show when I was four, watching TV, and I thought, I want to be a Beatle. But, you know, that was, I want to be a musician. I didn't know the word musician at the time. I was well, I think a lot of times people get uh, a lot of flack, like, oh, you saw something and now you want to be like that, or, you know. But really, it's, there's something like you're, uh, you, you're an acorn, you know, you have your DNA all built in already. And when you see something on the outside that resonates with you, you realize, that's me. I do that. That's mine. I have to have that. I want my students to um, feel prepared, but I, I, I want them to feel like they're their full selves. You know, they're they're complete as as an artist, as a musician. They're they're accomplishing what they've set out to accomplish. I don't want them to feel like they still have limitations. I want to get them past whatever those are. I often say to them, "You are your own best teacher." because you know what you still need to work on. Like, don't hide those things. This is the time to work on that. And you have more time to practice in your first and second semester than any other time because your major kicks in in the third semester. And I find with guitars, guitarists especially, oftentimes each hand is developed at a different level. You know, the, usually the fretting hand is way above the, the picking hand. And I think especially folks who have never used books, they're missing out because one of the challenges of playing guitar is skipping strings. It's a drag, you know, like these are all in the way of each other. My friend plays piano, and she said, you're playing pi piano on like, six, like chess on six different levels at once. How can you be specific with the pick? But I find if you hold very little of it out, you have better control over it rather than having it flop around. And if you work on just a few string skipping exercises in any really good technique book, like A Modern Method for Guitar, or you learn a classical piece or two, by the time you learn that classical piece, you have that technique. Because it's the greatest guitar department in the world, and it's always been the largest guitar department in the world, uh, the most versatility, uh, the best books, the William G. Levitt books, are the best books I've ever seen for teaching guitar. And a book is the shortest cut. It's the fastest way to getting to the technique and the level of everything that you're looking for, especially Bill Levitt's books. My God, teaches you theory, harmony, improv, chord substitution, voicings, how to read, uh, how to play, how to pick, how to alternate strings. It teaches you everything. I had a, a little tape recorder when I was a kid it had little reels in it. It was like this big. And then there were cassettes and then big web core tape recorders that my dad used to tape and make things with with, with his voice. And uh, then a four track reel to reel and an eight track half inch that I started making albums on, which were CDs at the time. and. So recording and playing with microphones and guitars started very young, like 11. I was pretty hooked because I could write my songs and hear them back. And then when I started with the multi-tracking, even bouncing back and forth to two cassette machines, I could hear all the ideas in my head without having to imagine them all. I can play them for other people and they can understand what I was thinking about. And I still love that painting with sound is just so delicious. Mm -hmm. 